Hello and welcome to Health Talk. I'm Dr. Manny. When it comes to fats, omega-3 fatty acids are some of the best. Science shows they can help prevent and even reverse heart disease and other serious conditions. Since the body cannot make these essential fats, many Americans turn to fish oil supplements. But could a tiny sea creature provide a better alternative? Here to help us figure it out is the director of integrative medicine at NYU and author of The Thrill of Krill, Dr. Dennis Goodman. Welcome, sir. You. you certainly are the man that knows a lot about omega-3s. What is krill oil? So krill oil is actually the oil that you get from these little crustaceans. They're like little shrimp creatures at the bottom of the ocean. Uh -huh. And it really is just another source of omega-3s. So that's the purest source of omega-3s that we have. Why? Because they're bottom feeders, they don't have a contamination with mercury. So they are much more, they're much safer. Now, so one of our problems with fish, nothing wrong with eating fish, but we're concerned all the time about the mercury content. Right. So that's why the source of the omega-3 is more pure as compared to that's the it. fish. Right? So just, that's the difference. The difference is these are omega-3s. It's EPA and DHA. It's just, in my opinion, a better source. All right. You talk about a wide range of treatable problems in health that omega-3s um, and these fatty acids can help you with. And I want to go through a list of a couple of them. You talk about cardiovascular disease. How does it help cardiovascular So there's several studies that have shown that actually these omega-3 fatty acids reduce the incidence of heart attacks and strokes. And there's many studies. There's the DART study, there's the GESI study, there's the JELA study. I'm just giving you yeah. these studies that have showed again and again that when you have omega-3s in your body, you've got less chance of having problems with atherosclerosis. And many of the reason is inflammation. These are one of the most beautiful natural sources we've got for anti-inflammatories. Right. Better than taking drugs if you can. So give me the mechanism by which omega-3s help with inflammation. So excellent. So omega-3s actually help to produce something called icosanoids, which are anti-inflammatory because they're prostaglandin inhibitors. You know there's a whole right. class of drugs, prostaglandin inhibitors. So by taking these omega-3s in the DHA, EPA and DHA, we reduce inflammation. One area in particular which I'm very interested in, because I am an obstetrician, I deliver babies, um, is the use of omega-3s in preventing uh, neurological problems, developmental problems in the newborn. Uh, you feel very strong about this too. Absolutely. You know, there are 8,000 studies of omega-3s of omega in the literature in humans. These are human studies. Mm -hmm. And several of them are related to the fact that the omega-3s, especially DHA, helps with brain fetal development, especially the third trimester. And in the first two years of life, it's essential that the baby is growing well. And we've found, and they've done studies that show that when mothers are DHA deficient, these babies don't do as well. And they've shown that you actually have a reduction in the amount of DHA in the placenta because it can happen, and then the babies actually land up having problems with growth. They don't get their milestones as well. So I'm a big believer that you should supplement with omega-3s. I've told you I prefer crawl in pregnancy. Two more problems that I want to talk about, which have to do with uh, uh, depression and, of course, uh, well-being for women as they get older or whatever. Uh, those are two categories that you feel that this uh, uh, omega oil works for. And I well. can't tell you how many patients that I know that have just felt better with anxiety and depression while being on uh, the omega-3s. We think that they help with neurotransmitters in the brain. It turns out dopamine and serotonin are important. They're kind of the happy hormone, the, ha yeah. the, the happy chemicals. Right. And omega-3s help to increase the levels of serotonin and dopamine. And because it contains phospholipids, the krill, we're going to come and talk about that, crosses the blood-brain better, better, and it's actually what the brain really needs is the phospholipids. Most of our brain tissue is made up of fat. Right, and exactly. And DHA is critical, just to make this point. I believe that it helps to reduce the incidence of dementia. I think that it helps with depression. I think it helps with anxiety. They've actually shown in Alzheimer patients, the hippocampus, which is an important part of the brain, they found lower levels of DHA in people with Alzheimer's, and that's the memory part of the brain. Right. So we've got a lot of information, a lot of science to say you should take it. There are people that may not be eligible to take omega-3s. What, what would be... Uh, so omega-3s also have a, a mild anticoagulant effect. Right. So it's important if you're taking any blood thinners, 
including aspirin. You should just talk to your doctor and make sure that you're not going to be in a situation where you've got increased risk of bleeding, particularly Coumadin, Warfarin. I don't use any uh, fish oils in that group, I mean, of krill or fish oils, because, because they can increase bleeding. And can I just make one point, because I really want to come across be clear. I'm not against fish oils, because fish oils contain omega-3s. Yeah. I'm saying here, we've got a superior source, source, because it contains phospholipids and astaxanthin, and that makes it more bioavailable, it's more tolerable, there's much less chance of having fishy burps and having a fishy aftertaste if it's absorbed. Now, if, if, if I'm allergic to fish. Good point. We can't take a chance on that. I'm not going to tell somebody, well, why don't you try and see what happens. If you're allergic to shellfish, you see an allergist if you really think you want to take this. I'm looking for a supplement. Um, uh, what should I look for in a bottle and how much should I take? Good point. So I think it depends on the situation. I like to think that you need about 500 milligrams of krill oil just as a maintenance. I think that you should have at least 250 milligrams of EPA and DHA, and then 40% should contain phospholipids. This is what makes krill different, because it helps with absorption, and then 750 micrograms of astaxanthin. We didn't talk about that, but that's an antioxidant. You want these things, you want to see them on the label. It's really important. So I think what you want to do is get your krill oil from a source where you know that you've got enough phospholipids, 40%, and that you have astaxanthin in it. And there's certain, you know, very, very good ones. There's one from now. And basically, the most important thing to realize is, yes, you're going to take a smaller amount, but because it's better absorbed, you don't need as much. Well, thank you so much. Uh, again, very important information. You certainly are the master of all this knowledge. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And if you have any questions, you can send them here at Fox at drmanyatfoxnews.com. Until next time, I'm Dr. Manny.